Hey, PKM Kids, this is going to be a video on KSP, so it's called. So it's still so equilibrium, and it's easier than acid and base equilibrium by quite a bit. Um, it's really just on a solid that is slightly soluble, like really slightly soluble. So that's all it is. So um, it's KSP, it's called solubility product equilibrium or solubility product constant. It's still just your K expression stuff. So, um, so a compound like this, I've told you, is insoluble. But every compound has a little bit of solubility. Okay, every compound's got a little bit of solubility. So this is going to be for compounds that have minuscule solubility. So you won't see like potassium nitrate, which when you put it in water, even though there's a max amount that can dissolve, it's considered soluble, completely splits apart into ions. So you won't see anything with this. That's not an equilibrium. Just solid this, put solid of that in water, completely splits apart. So we're looking at things that are typically insoluble. Like AGCL has a little bit of solubility. Put it in water, and some of the molecules dissolve. So we're going to see a two-sided arrow. If we're going to draw the arrow proportionally, it would be gigantically back that way. So some solid of that, put it in water. I'll draw it this way. But if we put some of that in some water, so every one of these is going to be that way, it does dissociate a little bit, but it's going to be a small amount. So aqueous ions, aqueous ions. Um, if we write our, our K expression, products or reactants, as we've always done, for acids and bases, it's this over this. Well, this is always a solid in this case. It's always a solid, so we don't include that in our expression. So our KSP expression will be concentration of silver ions to the first power times concentrations of chlorine ions to the first power. So remember, these are molarities. These are molarities. Now, this KSP value, I'm going to kind of actually round it a little bit just to make it easy. But this KSP value for AGCL is approximately 1 times 10 to the negative 10th. So remember, the smaller this number, the less the reaction goes that direction. So if this was like 10 to the negative 20th, there would be very, very little of these. So if we think about this, that means that this could be 1 times 10 to the negative fifth molar, and this could be 1 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. But that's as much as it would dissolve. That'd be the maximum amount that could be dissolved. So that is the maximum molarity you can have of AGCL dissolved in water. So if you put 10 grams of this water, not very much of it dissolves. You're going to have only this molarity, 0 0.00001 molar. AG ions and the same thing for chlorine ions because if you multiply those, you're going to get this. Now, if there was already some chlorine ions sitting around the solution, like you tried to put AGCL in some salt water, so say that say you already had some chlorine ions that were like that was like one times ten to the negative third molar. Well, this could only be one times ten to the negative seventh molar, be even smaller than what it was before, a smaller decimal. So this KSP value will tell you the maximum amount of these that will be dissolved in solution at any one time. So we can figure out the solubility of the whole compound from that. Okay, let's take a little different, a little different one. Let's say we have, um, let's say we have a compound like oh, calcium phosphate, which is not very soluble. So if we put that in water. Again, a small number of molecules dissolve. I don't know what the KSP value is. Let's see if I can find this here. Um, it is really small. I'll tell you what it is here in a second. So this is split into three moles of calcium ions plus two moles of phosphate ions. So if you write our K expression, concentration of calcium ions times concentration of phosphate ions. But remember, it's been a while. For acids and bases, these have always been a one and one. This would be to the third power because of this. This would be to the second power. So if we put the molarity of these in there and cube them, molarity of those in there and square them, they can't go above the KSP. Can't go above the KSP. And this KSP value is about one times 10 to the negative 30 second. I'm, I'm rounding that a little bit. Um, it's actually 1.3. This is a, that's a really, really, really small KSP value. That means this and this can't be very much. You could not, not very much this would dissolve. It's got a really, really small solubility. 
All right, there's the first part of that. Um, pause for just a second. All right, so you have this solubility table that has some acid base. This is KB, sir, bases. It's got KSPs in the bottom of it. Um, in general, you can kind of look and see which compound's more soluble. If they have the same ion ratio, like this is a 1PB to 1SO4, 1BA to 1SO4. So whoever has the smaller KSP is less soluble, less soluble. If they have different ion ratios, like, like um, PBCl2, that's going to split into a mole of PB and two moles of chlorine, and AgCl only splits into two, now we can't really compare those very well. All right. So let me do just a couple problems on your notes. <clears throat> you get to the notes here, sorry. No, it's a pretty small notes packet. There's not a lot of this that's going to be going on. So um, I'll just do. So these problems are going to be figuring out KSP, so getting the K value from solubility. The opposite would be I give you the KSP and you tell me what is the solubility. When I say what's the solubility, I usually want to know in molarity, in moles per liter, maybe in grams per liter. Okay, but usually in molarity, moles per liter, as we're doing things. All right. So first thing I always write, what's happening here? So we have copper bromide. So copper bromide is CuBr. Again, it's a solid, slightly dissolving, making some copper ions. It's copper plus one in this case. Plus BR negative one. That means my KSP expression is concentration of copper ions times concentration of bromine ions. And it says copper bromine has a measured solubility of two times ten to the fourth molar. So this maximum solubility is 0 0.0002 molar. Well, that means that this would be 0 0.0002 molar. I added an extra zero. And this would be the same molarity. So I can plug in 2 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Okay, that's molarity for that. And 2 times 10 to the negative fourth molar for that. Multiply those two, and you get 4 times 10 to the negative eighth is our KSP. There is no label for our K, just like there has not been. That's very simple. If it gives you solubility. Um, remember, this is the maximum amount that can be dissolved at that temperature. You cannot dissolve any more. It's the maximum concentration you could have of these two ions. If they can't go above the KSP. Those concentrations can't. Otherwise, you'd have more solid forming at the bottom, precipitating out. All right, let's do another one. This one's a little bit different because it's got multiple ions. So we have Bi... 2s3 again as a solid splitting into two moles of bismuth ions plus three moles of sulfur ions and it says the solubility of the whole compound is really really small one times something a 15th molar well that doesn't mean this is one times something a 15th or that is it means the compound itself is so think about it if this is one molar, that would be two molar. If this compound was one molar, that would be three molar. So we got to multiply this by two for that and by three for that. So if we set up our KSP equals concentration of bismuth ions is going to be three times 10 to the negative 15th. Sorry, not three. Two times 10 to the negative 15th. And that is going to be squared because there's a two there times three times 10 to the 15th molar cubed. Multiply those and you get a really, 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 really small KSP, which tells you that this compound is basically completely insoluble. Almost none of it. I mean, those are such tiny molarities. Those are tiny amounts that would be dissolved. All right. Um, Fairly easy there. Fairly easy. One more part here. So now we're going to go figure out solubility from KSP. I'll do a couple of these. Um, again, relative solubilities can be deduced by comparing values of KSP. Be careful. 
It's only if they have the same ion to ion ratio. I'll we'll kind of go through that as we get going there. But remember, temperature does change solubility. Some substances become more soluble in warm water. Some become less soluble in warm water. So here's a here's a problem right here. I'm going to do this. So this is this is the KSP value for calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate splits into calcium ions plus carbonate ions. Oops, sorry. It's giving you the KSP and it wants to know what is the solubility of the compound. So I'll put in, so if I write my KSP expression, KSP equals concentration of calcium ions times concentration of CO3 negative two ions, both to the first power because there's no coefficients in front of them. So if we plug our KSP in here, so we go 3.8 times 10 to the negative ninth is our KSP equals those. We can just put a variable in there. Now, they usually use the variable S, I think, because they want it to say this is the solubility of these ions. So if we put an S in for that, S in for that, it's going to be S squared. Or you can put an X in if you want to, X squared. Square root, square root will tell us the concentration of calcium ions and the concentration of CO3 negative 2 ions, which are in a one-to-one -one ratio with this, will also be the concentration of the whole compound. So um, get my answers here. When you do that, you get 6.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. Change color. So 6.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. Remember, that will be in molarity. Moles per liter. So that is the maximum concentration of calcium ions and the concentration of CO3 negative 2 ions, which would be the same as the concentration of the whole compound. Um, this one also wants it in grams per liter. So I'm going to get this into grams per liter. We just say one mole equals the grams of calcium carbonate, which happens to be 100 grams here at the table. We can multiply and get our grams per liter, which is like 0 0.0062 grams per liter. So you can put 0 0.0062 grams of this compound in a liter of water. No more than that. Can't tell any more than that. All right. I got maybe another one here. Two more. Call it good. Um, copper iodate, so if we go copper iodate splits into copper ions plus two moles of iodate ions. So our KSP expression would be concentration of copper to the first power times concentration of IO3 negative squared. All right. So it wants to know the, the solubility again. So put our KSP in out front. it. So 1.4 times 10 to the negative seventh, let's be a negative sign, equals, again, if we put a variable in here, so if I put an X in there, again, they tend to use S, so I'll use S. Put S in right there, stands for solubility of that ion. Well, this ion would be 2S. I don't like that S very well. 2S, because if this is S molar, that's going to be double the concentration. And we have to square it. So again, we're saying this concentration is X, this is 2X, or S and 2S. Well, 2S squared is actually 2S times 2S would be 4S squared times this S is going to be 4S cubed equals 1.4 times 10 to the negative seventh. So we divide by four on both sides, and then we have to cube root. Divide by four and then cube root it, or carrot key to the one-third power. So when we do that, that gives us an answer of, I'm gonna erase this. It's gonna give us that answer, but I'm gonna erase here. Well, erase down here. It gives us an answer of 3.3. I'm going to write that normal number. 0 0.0033 0 3 molar. So remember, that would be this concentration because that's what S was. This concentration right there would be 0 0.0066 molar. The concentration of the compound would be this value because this is in a one to one ratio with the compound. So that is the concentration. That's the maximum concentration you can have of that compound, maximum molarity. 
All right, one more. It's kind of a longer video than I'd like to have. All right, now we're going to say solubility with a common ion in there. So it's very similar. Um, so we have CaF2, put in some water, produces some calcium ions, plus two moles of F negative ions. So if we write our KSP expression, equals concentration of calcium ions to the first power times concentration of F negative ions squared. Well, it's saying we're trying, we're not trying to dissolve this in water. So if we're trying to dissolve water, we put in an X and a two X and square it and figure out what the solubility is. It's saying we're trying to dissolve it in some sodium fluoride solution, which already has some sodium ions floating around. The sodium ions are always soluble, no matter what they mix with. And we have some fluorine ions. Well, common ion effect. We have some fluorines floating around. So think about the Schottelius principle. If we put some fluorine ions in already, equilibrium is going to shift back this way towards the solid. So it's going to be less soluble in this solution. So remember, this would have 0 0.025 molar F negative ions. So we're just going to plug that in right here. We don't have to double it. Okay, we don't have to double it. We just got to say there's already that concentration of F negatives in there. We'll put in a variable right here and see what this is. So, so we go 4 times 10 to the 11th equals, I'm going to throw an X in, it could be an S again, times 0 0.025 squared. Again, the reason we have to double it is it's not coming from, those points are not coming from this, they're coming from another solution. So square this, divide it over, and I get X, which would equal my concentration of calcium ions which would also equal my concentration of calcium fluoride to be, let's say that number right there, 6.4 times 10 to the 8th molar. All right, went through that a little bit fast, but I think you can do these things. Have a good day.